Thank you very much for the introduction and for having invited me here. It's always lovely to come back. Um, so instead of giving a kind of straight research talk today, um, I decided to give a sort of more overview talk in the spirit of the conference so that as many people as possible would get something out of it. Um, and in particular, if there's anything I say that you don't, where you don't know what the words mean or you don't understand, please feel free to interrupt me and ask. Um, cool. So, what are we interested in here? Well, suppose we have a symplectic manifold M. There's lots of different flavors of it's transformations that we can consider. So classically, we could just look at diffeomorphisms. Um, M may or may not be compact, closed, so I'll always put sub C for compact support. So I could have diffeomorphisms. I could even do simpler and have... Sorry, one sec. Homeomorphisms. Um, of course, we're symplectic topologists, so we're particularly interested in the subgroup of diffeomorphisms that preserve the symplectic form. Um, and you could ask, well, how about in homeo? Well, you could take a C0 equivalent of SIMP, as one does with hamiomorphisms, and just say, well, OK, I'm going to think about SIMP C M omega inside homeo, and now complete. Um, now, we have to be a tiny bit careful with topologies. So here I'm completing with respect to the C0 topology. Um, Whereas in this column, I naturally have the C infinity topology. OK, so these groups are ginormous. Um, so you could study in detail, for instance, just hello. Thank you. Um, you could study in detail, for instance, just the connected component of the identity. Um, and I'm interested in essentially the orthogonal question, which is the group of connected or path-connected components. So you could think about you know, pi naught, putting pi naught everywhere. And now you naturally have maps instead of inclusions. Oh, I wanted color next time. Um, <coughs> Um, so this is what we call the symplectic mapping class group, or you know, the smooth version. So this is the smooth symplectic mapping class group. Um, and this is the C0 one. Um, and this was first introduced, I believe, in Alexandre Nos' thesis. Um, one of the great things about this conference is there's tons of young speakers. Well, this is recent work by a young person who's somewhere in the audience. Um, cool. So, at this point, you're probably thinking, like, okay. How does this relate to the mapping class groups I know the most, which are the 2D ones? Well, the answer is everything's the same. So if M has real dimension 2, well, um, preserving a symplectic form just means you're volume preserving. And that's the same as 
orientation preserving diffeomorphisms, which is the same as the, the one with orientation preserving homeomorphisms, um, which is the same as having symplectic homeomorphisms. Um, cool. Um, so this is a sort of classical, as it were, mapping class group. And we know sort of tons and tons about this. So first of all, we have generators, which are Dane twists. Um, let me um, let me remind you what this look like. So suppose you have a surface here. So some curve A. We've got some other curve B. Then the Dane twist about A. So it's a transformation, oh, I've done this twice. It's a transformation of the surface where you cut open along A, you kind of turn each kind of end of your, uh, the, the cut open cylinder 180 degrees in opposite directions and you glue back. So A hasn't changed. And then if you look at my curve B, it kind of witnesses what's happened. So here we go. So we have generators. Um, we also have relations, um, which I won't list right now. Um, and beyond that, we have sort of lots of structural properties of this group. Um, so things like the Thurston classification um, or Tietz alternative and so on. Um, and let me also point out, because um, this will be useful later, a sort of a slogan that suitably interpreted, these maps are all given as monodromies. What do I mean? Well, let me take a single Dane twist. So locally, locally my Dane twist is supported on the neighborhood of A, which is T star S1. Um, and I can think of my T star S1 as modeled by z squared plus w squared equals t inside uh, c star c squared, um, where c t is some fixed constant non-zero. And now, if I look at the induced map I get by having the monodromy as t uh, travels around the unit circle in C star, so T and S1. Um, this precisely gives us the Dane twist. Okay, I'm gonna switch this off, move it, and put it back because I keep hitting it. Working? Cool, thanks. Dane twist. Cool. <laughs> Questions? So, well, diffeomorphisms and homeomorphisms, we're used to the idea that they're different in higher dimensions because of exotic, uh, exotic spheres. So, you know, if I have homeomorphisms of compact support of R2n, um, this is just contractible. 
um, by the Alexander trick. Um, and uh, which is you conjugate where the, the scaling, so x vector goes to tx, where t gets smaller and smaller. Um, and you could also play this trick with the group of symplectic homeomorphisms. Oopsie. So if I take omega standard, um, then we see that this also allows us to contract. Um, in contrast, once I look at diffeomorphisms R2n, well, in general, this has interesting connected components because they're in one-to-one -one correspondence with the group of exotic spheres one dimension up. You use them as clutching maps. Um, so this is exotic spheres. Um, and one of my favorite questions is if you take SIMPC R2n connected components, so with the standard omega, well, for n equals 2, obviously you're back on the surface case and this group is contractible. Um, for any, sorry, for any, 2n equals 2. Um, for 2n equals 4, this is trivial by Gromov. Um, and for higher dimensions, we just have no idea. This is a kind of pretty big open problem. Um, in particular, we, we both don't know whether a clutching map of an exotic sphere can be realized as a symplectic morphism. We do know that that's true for some non-standard symplectic forms. Um, and we don't know, you know, there could be more connected components here um, that just an attempt connected components in identity for diff. Um, but interestingly, in the C0 case, that issue just dissipates. Uh, this is the one that has a low morale. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Um, all right, we can do this. Okay, so so in two D, we know lots and lots about symplectic mapping class groups, and the thing that you should sort of basically keep in mind in high dimensions is the general rule is that we have a lot more questions than answers. Um, and what I want to try and do is kind of give you a vignette, both of the kind of tools we have and of the kind of questions you can and can't probe so far. So the first thing I want to say is that pi naught simpc m is only known Um, for a very small collection of examples, um, so they're all in dimension four, which of course has to be because of this big thing. Um, and then essentially with a sort of like one technique applied in kind of increasingly refined ways, um, which is that they're all meant spaces that are um, sort of foliated by holomorphic disks. Um, going back to Gromov's paper. Um, since we're asking questions, um, 
I'm going to try and put as many questions as I can on the board, um, if it cooperates. Um, so one question you can ask is, for these cases, do we have just that they're the same groups for sim and C, uh, for smooth and C naught? Um, so the techniques by Jeanne that I'll tell you about later won't immediately apply for very many of these because a lot of these spaces are closed, um, but they're nice descriptions of mapping class groups, so I think it's kind of a reasonable proposition to think about that. Um, cool. So beyond these kind of small family of examples where we know everything, um, what kind of tools do we have? Well, in the C infinity case, the main kind of tool that we have where sort of like basically all of the arguments we have boiled down to some version of doing this is that we consider some action of symplectic mapping class group onto the wrap for chi category of M. Um, for technical reasons, let me assume for here on that M is Louisville. Um, just to have everything defined and be honest. Um, so what's this? This is your favorite flavor of the Foucault category of M. Um, so it has objects built as the complexes of exact Lagrange and some manifolds. And morphisms of Fleur cochain groups. Um, and for dynamicists in the room who don't like for chaos categories, this is going to be a black box. I'm not going to go into the nuts and bolts of it. Um, Yes. Yeah. And the right hand side, you can see the CD. Yeah. That's right. It's not just me. No, no, okay. But just when you ask for this map, you do see zero, see zero on both sides. It's hard to catch. I mean, you, when you're in the, in this world, um, you really want two elements in here to be related by a symplectic isotopy in order to do any of the yeah. things we want with Fleur theory. Um, the, there's a more interesting kind of subtle question about on the C0 side about path, con path connected versus connected, um, which I think is a kind of coffee question and I'm also I'm not the expert. Um, but, but yes, yeah, so kind of lots of people academically related to Paul Seidel study variations of this action. Um, what kind of general things can I tell you about it? Well, first of all, um, by mirror symmetry, um, this action on the rep category has a mirror counterpart in algebraic geometry. Um, and what this gives us a sort of a philosophical level on the symplectic side is that whatever the image of the symplectic mapping class group of M is inside, you know, auto equivalences of wrapped for K category. So this um, is kind of intrinsically interesting. Um, so, Uh, 
Um, so it's more than just a tool to kind of look at this representation to autoequivalences of this. Um, the next thing I want to point out is that kind of intriguingly for me, the issue up there with you know, potential exotic symplectomorphisms of balls, you're never going to detect that in the kind of, at least kind of vanilla Reptrochaea categories. So if you have some Dabu chart, yeah? Okay, someone sneezed. Then, you know, symplectomorphisms of that, whatever it is, you can implant them in any Dabu neighborhood in M. Um, and so then you can look at the image here. Um, and you're just going to go onto the identity. So you, whatever this is, it's not detected. No chance of detecting it here. Um, so while we don't know whether or not this can be non-trivial, we do know for slightly roundabout reasons that this map you know, from pi naught simc to all tech is not always faithful. Um, so this is work of Yorgos, who's also in the audience, Good. Um, um, so they proved that um, if you reparameterize a Dane twist. Um, how SN, I'll actually come back to defining these in a few minutes if you haven't seen them before. Um, if you reparameterize one of these um, by pullback by an exotic diffeomorphism. of Sn, um, you can get different classes in pi naught simp. On the other hand, Seidel shows that these are the same, or well, his work implies that these are the same in Ortec of Rapt. Um, so this isn't faithful, and what have we forgotten? We've forgotten one of these, basically some kind of exotic phenomenon um, related, in a sense, to kind of smooth exotic phenomena, partly because that's all we've got our hands on, but of course, this leads to Another question, um, which I think should be kind of resolvable by staring at everything carefully, um, which is, um, are the Dimitri Glurizel Evans examples the same in C0? Um, and I think that's a question of adapting Alexander Trick. Um, but I haven't done it carefully. Um, cool. This is a good point to ask for more questions. What do they detect that this is? Aha. So it's very cunning. So they do, they say, assume they're the same. They do some suspension process that gets you in kind of roughly to that, like basically like in, high, in a higher dimension, that gets you then an interesting Lagrangian where basically you've used this diffeomorphism as a clutching map. 
And then that shows that that violates some of the constraints that Muhammad has on possible classes for exotic nearby Lagrangians. So there's a whole, there's a whole collection of results about basically like partial results towards the nearby Lagrangian conjecture. And in particular, in T star SN for high enough N, a bunch of exotic SNs were excluded by Muhammad. So then pick a reparameterization that's going to get you one of the excluded guys. Um, and in fact, they also, I talked about, I'm concentrating on pi naught today, but they also have really cool results for higher homotopy groups, like non-trivial higher homotopy classes that way, which is one of the very few things we know. Um, so yeah, it's a cool paper. Um, other questions? Yes. Out of uh, these examples that have been worked out in dimension four, are, yes. are there examples for which M is closed? Yeah, that's what I said. So there's lots of closed examples. The original things were closed, and there's a couple of ones that aren't closed. I wasn't sure if it's okay. No worries. Um, and yeah. yeah. Um, if you take a symmetric homomorphism and act on exact Lagrangian, then it can be not exact Lagrangian. But I, I guess you can always mm. find um, yeah, so, uh, so you have to be a tiny bit, if I, if I had put, um, maybe I'll just do this, if you put M. Weinstein instead of Uville, in fact, you're definitely fine. Um, actually, no, for Uville, you're fine too, um, or even Weinstein. Yeah, so there's, um, exactly. That's, that's kind of technical and a bit subtle, but, basically like um, lots of proceeding with care. That's a great question. Cool. Um, so these were C, C infinity tools. Um, I'm going to test this out, guys. Who's T1, front or back? Amazing. Oh, 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 oh. So, so for C naught, um, the main thing I want to advertise is also Janos' thesis work, um, where essentially one of the things he has in his thesis is this very powerful theorem um, to get. Uh, C infinity, inf um, to get basically C infinity information um, to survive in the C0 setting. To maybe C, C infinity information um, surviving in the C0 setting. Um, at this point, of course, I should give a caveat that um, any uh, imprecision is due to me and not him. Um, so what's the setting here? So we have M, a Luval manifold. Uh, that's actually partly why I wanted Luval. And let's say that I have two closed exact Lagrangians, L and L prime. Um, and he wants one of them, say L prime, to have 0 H1, which in practice, uh, just with R, which in practice still gives you a lot of space. Um, and now the theorem he has, oopsie. Um, the conclusion is the following. So what he has is that if you have, say, phi, some symplectomorphism, in fact, it wouldn't have to be compact support because your two guys are closed, um, such that the rank of Z mod 2 Fleur homology um, 
um, is not the same as the rank of Z mod 2 Fleur cohomology of phi applied to L, L prime, um, then phi can't be in this, the connected component of the identity. So the C0 connected, whoops, that is clearly not enough space. of identity in symplectic homeomorphisms. Um, and let me remark, this is connected rather than path connected, so a little stronger than being different in pi naught. Um, and what's the idea of the proof? Um, The idea is that he looks at an, a barcode, if you have met these great, otherwise don't worry, it'll, it's a black box here, barcode associated to the flow cohomology of these guys. Um, and he proves a C0 continuity result for these. Um, and the, this rank is simply the number of semi-infinite bars. Um, so kind of for experts, the, as I understand it, the thing that's kind of very cool at the technical level about this theorem is the C0 continuity. Of course, for me, the really cool stuff is like all the things one can then go and try to do with it. Cool. Sorry. Yes. What is the zero topology here for like I, I don't know what you mean. What is so, is yeah, topology? great. So, I didn't say quite enough. So, you would go from simp, maybe I'll write in a different color so it doesn't get overly smudged. I'm going to make a little box. Who am I kidding? I just need this space. So you can go from simp cm to something that I think in his notation is b hat, which is basically a space of barcodes, but you ignore overall shifts. Um, and then the, he proves that you know if if you go if you take phi to the barcode associated to this guy which I think is this notation. So this is this barcode. Um, then he proves that this map has some kind of local, I think, Lipschitz C0 continuity with respect to this C0 on this guy, which means you can complete. And you, yeah. 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 It's weird if the proof is like uh, kind of the one that uh, uh, Bukowski immediate and the Kulpezin did. I'm not familiar enough with their work to know, um, but that's also a, a good coffee question. So I understand that, right, that an alternative way to see it is that the homology depends continuously on that. Sure. The value of the homology depends. Yes. Yes. But somehow you need, and that, that's kind of why I said it this way and I kept this in the box as it was kind of accessible to as many people as possible. Um, so then, in particular, um, if you're a kind of Fukaya categories type person, now there's an obvious question for our community, which is how many of the things that we know about actions of symplectomorphism groups can be detected just by thinking about ranks?
Um, so I'll send this guy to the top. I'm not going to write on the lower bit of this because I think that's probably a bit antisocial. I think the middle guy can just stay there. Other questions? We, Deep in conversation. Question. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, so. I've told you a bunch about tools, but not yet about the kind of things we can use them for, and in particular, the kind of you know, landscape of p potential properties of simp, pinot simp that we're aware of. Um, so the first kind of, in a sense, like still our best source of symplectomorphisms is uh, Dane Twists. Um, so, whenever you have some symplectic manifold M with a Lagrangian submanifold SN, you have the Dane twist in SN. So, this is a sort of generalized Dane twist. Um, this is a specialized enough conference that I wasn't going to define this in detail. Um, but let me say, for the perspective of my monodromy narrative that I'll come back to, that while T star Sn is symplectomorphic to the generalization of this, namely sum of Zi squared equal T, sum T inside where there is C n plus 1, so T is still in C star. And then the monodromy for T in S1 is, ag Jesus. is again uh, the Dane twist. Okay, so what do we know? Well, first of all, just a, a single Dane twist um, um, this has infinite order um, in the symplectic mapping class group. Um, by Seidel, and then Jeannot, you can use this kind of rank. You know, this is detected at least as soon as you have kind of another Tesla Grandian at the level of those ranks, and then you get it in uh, pi naught simp c. Um, of course, if you have any relations between Dane twists that are true in the smooth setting, then they're also going to be true in the C0 setting. Um, so what can be interesting is, what if you have no relations? And actually, in the smooth setting, we have a very nice case where we always know that there's no relations, which is if you have S0 and S1 Lagrangian spheres um, such that the rank of their Flerth group, still with Z mod 2, is at least 2. Um, and they're not isomorphic 
in the Fukaya category. Um, then their Dane twists uh, generate a free subgroup of the symplectic mapping class group. In other words, they have no relations in, and again, this is true both in the C infinity symplectic mapping class group, which was due to me, and in the C0, um, by where again, it's, you can kind of, Alexandre kind of check carefully that you detect enough with the ranks, and so you get it here. Okay, so the final section of my talk, I want to shift perspective a bit to kind of bring back this sort of monodromy slogan that I already had both for the 2D Dane twist and the infinite dimensional one. Although actually I realized I should ask for questions before jumping into that. Well, I have a question, uh, which I almost forgot, which is, in the 2D case, we know that pi naught, you know, for simp, sorry, I mean, n equals 2, so pi naught simp c t star s2, there's just z generated by the Dane twist. And so a question, well, the smooth question you know, we know it acts faithfully, et cetera, but we're stuffed in high dimensions because of this problem here. Um, but of course you could, okay, if you were just in the C0 setting, you know that this is there, and is there anything else? It's uh, you're going to need different tools for that, right? Because instead of showing that something injects, you need to show that there's nothing else there. Um, but um, but at the same time, like you know, you could like put your hand like I don't know, look at T star S three and start staring. Um, cool. So um, so the final point I want to convey is sort of a meta point or a slogan, which is basically that morally all the symplectic, all the kind of, both examples of symplectic morphisms we have and kind of ways of getting properties of symplectic mapping class groups, in practice, um, the sort of like, is that all are sort of like, sort of smooth symplectic mapping class group um, element examples, all are well, known elements um, originate, originate uh, let me say, sort of morally um, through by monodromy or as monodromies. Um, so let me erase back over here. Um, and tell you a bit more about what I mean. So, what do I mean? Well, let's say we're so, 
you have some Weinstein M. Um, for instance, the smoothing of a singularity. Then you have some, you know, in nice cases. Hello? Yes. yes. You ask this question, uh, the question uh, there or uh, for, the con for the simple or, uh, yeah. or continuous? Yeah. So this is below. Ah, sorry. Uh, this is for Tista SM. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I saw that you. Uh, so it's not no, right that uh, the, this P0 group, the symplectic matrix group of, of the manifold is always generalized. No, it's false. If you let me keep going, I'll say that. Um, but the, the reason I'm approaching with this in a monotony way is that it, it's false for a good reason rather than an exotic reason. Sorry? I said it's false for a good reason rather than an exotic reason. <laughs> um, so in you know, the settings that we get our hands on in practice, you algebraic geometry, like algebraic geometry will hand you some sort of space let me say def m, um, space of smooth deformations. This is still in my kind of slogan philosophy. So I'm saying the sort of smooth deformations of m and pi naught of this. Well, if you, ha you have a sort of one parameter family of Weinstein manifolds that are all, you know, Weinstein deformation equivalent to guy you started with, going around gives you, well, the monodromy will give will hand you a mapping class element. So this maps to pi naught simp C M um, via monodromy. And so in particular, what we end up with is you map all the way to you know, Ortec WM. Um, and you have sort of like lots of data with, you know, with like ranks of flow groups potentially. Um, so what, what are examples? Well, there's a famous example due to Seidel. where if I take M to be, and I'm going to go over complex numbers, so Z naught to the K um, so this is an A N Milner fiber for experts. These, these are complex coordinates. Um, and pi naught Sorry, pi one of this deformation space is the braid group on k strands. Um, this acts faithfully. Um, this is detected, um, so at this point, this is also due to Karanoff plus uh, Seidel plus Karanoff. Sorry, I'm sure I'm compressing the presentation a bit. Um, this is kind of the way those arguments go. A, they're Z mod 2 Fleur cohomology groups, and B, it's kind of detected with lots of ranks. Um, so, Alexandre's work doesn't quite apply directly because there are some Lagrangians that you use that are not compact, but in a kind of quite controlled way. Um, so the obvious question there would be that the braid group embeds in the C0 case. Um, 
this I'd expect is pretty like reasonably accessible. Um, as a remark, in the 2D case, so when you only have Z0, Z1, Z2, uh, Johnny Evans proved that, or Johnny Evans together with Vevevu, they proved that there's nothing else. Um, that's the whole pi naught simp. And so you could ask for symplectic homeomorphisms, uh, do you also have nothing else? Um, but that, I think, will quickly boil down to this tricky path-connected versus connected question. Um, Vincent seems really into that. Um, the next thing I want to point out is using ide monodromy ideas, but with non-hypersurface singularities. Um, I had work with Paul Hacking where we construct lots of examples of symplectomorphisms Um, which are not uh, generated by Dane twists. Um, so this used lots of ideas from mirror symmetry, um, but let me say two things. One is that these guys are just smoothings of something called cusp singularities, which are not hypersurface ones. Um, so in general, with hypersurface singularities, you just expect monodromy to give you twists. But once you move away from hypersurface, you get other stuff. And the, reason, the fact that they're not generated by Dane twists, this can be, just be detected at the level of the action and homology. Um, so I'll say these are 4D examples. on H2. Uh, so in particular, in the C0 case, this carries through. Um, but I have the same sort of meta question, which is, you know, we have, uh, for these cases, we have kind of, you know, description of pi 1 of the relevant, the thing that I'm calling def m, the relevant deformation space, because algebraic geometry gives you that. Um, the, we know it acts faithfully through the fukai kati reaction. Probably, you know, you can certainly hope to show it acts faithfully at the C0 level, because it's basically lots of twist stuff and some linear thing acting on homology. Um, and then, at the smooth level, it seems pretty hard to show that you've got nothing else, even though that's what we expect. But potentially, at the C0 level, that's doable or a stepping stone or something. Um, so anyway, I said I was asking lots of questions. Um, and the final phenomenon I want to, show you, I want to sh tell you, um, let me just erase half of this. Because I've got, um, well, I've got five minutes to half past, and I'll stop on time, even though we started a tiny bit late. So, so this pi naught that went up there, so this pi one, that's this is still finitely generated. Um, and, of course, in the 2D case, the symplectic mapping class group is finitely generated. On the other hand, um, in, once you move to the 3D case, um, this is with Ivan Smith, we showed we just studied one threefold. So I'm just going to give you equations. So it's u1, v1 is, say, z minus 1, u2, v2, z plus 1 um, inside. So I want c4. So this is for the ui, vi times c star. So this is for z. Um, sorry, I should have erased more. 
um, you might be asking, why on earth are you looking at this threefold? Um, well, let me just tell you as kind of an so assertion of authority, this is the most important sort of like, essentially like most basic example of an open threefold for which you want to understand mirror symmetry in dimension three. Um, so in kind of our world, this is sort of a completely fundamental uh, threefold example. And on the other hand, we showed that this has the following phenomenon. So by Z star infinity, I just mean a free group with infinitely many generators. So free, um, countably infinitely many generators. Um, so we showed that this injects into pi naught sim c. OK, um, but if you know some group theory, this is a subgroup of z star z. So, so far, this isn't so relevant. Um, but using autoequivalences of kind of using mapping to autoequivalences of Foucault categories, plus the fact that this is simple enough that kind of people who care about algebraic structures on the other side of the mirror, like bridge and stability conditions, kind of can really give us enormous amounts of information about this space. Um, we show that actually you can construct a map out of here that subjects back, such that the composition is the identity, um, which in particular implies that pi naught simp is infinitely generated. Um, and in terms of at least getting this injection, um, if you wanted to just prove this is injective without constructing this bit, um, you could do this. I lost my yellow. Um, you could do this. Is this visible at the back? Thank you. Um, you can do this. by generalizing uh, kavanov seidel ideas. Which in particular means that it looks tractable if you want to just detect things by sort of how ranks of pairs of Lagrangians change under a map. Um, so again, this kind of opens the door to kind of questions about, well, okay, here's a concrete example. You know, there's clearly quite a few things we can say about the C0 mapping class group just by bootstrapping on the C infinity thing. You know, could we show that there's nothing else? Um, what you know, other techniques might be available? And in particular, something I'd be curious about is uh, what a good, if you have pi naught, maybe I'll erase and finish with that. Um, So my question is sort of a meta question. Um, so how to construct interesting maps out of <coughs> pi naught sub c. Um, for instance, kind of combining lots of this barcode information with some well-chosen collection of Lagrangians. Um, I'll stop there. Yeah, 
Jogos. So what idea behind the Okay, so two different, yes, so um, they're, these are generated by Dane twists and in fact it's easy to draw, to kind of draw kind of more spot tire style left shift vibrations for this and then I can show you who those spheres are. So they're like all, they're like yes, um, the Right, so that's so this is part, this is kind of why I wanted to organize this with the monodromy thread. So the point is that in dimension four, all of these moduli spaces that kind of the ones that we understand well, they're all finitely generated. And on the other hand, in dimension six, that for um, you know, like the way the kind of geometry just naturally works on the AG side is you'll find yourself with you know once you look at the, mon the space that's going to give you kind of compactly supported monodromies. Now it, you just get lots of spaces that become infinite generated instead of finitely generated. Um, where somehow the yeah, there's a bunch of there's a bunch more things I could say in purely AG terms about why you sh you might want to expect that, um, but maybe I can save them. So these, yeah, these guys, these guys have very nice, clean Lagrangian torus vibrations, um, which you can also draw very easily. Um, and you can see all of those spheres pretty naturally in terms of the Lagrangian torus vibrations as well. Um, okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Yep. I know your name. That's, so, that's fine. At the start, you said that kind of the degree bus is like amorphism. It's only known in dimension four, but like very nice example where you can find that mm -hmm. it's yeah. sort of homomorphic just by ratio. Yes. So I'm, assu oh, sorry, I'm assuming you meant like the whole photo certain zender or something like that? Right? Um, or not? No. So the, the original idea goes back. So, this, so Gromov has this kind of amazing 1985 paper. So it goes back to that. And the point is, so. The first, one of the first things he proved using J-holomorphic curves is that simp compact of R4, or you know, the ball, with the standard symplectic form is contractible. And the thing he did for that, he says, okay, well, with like, your favorite J, you just kind of have you know, leaves that are all J-holomorphic curves. And then you can use that, for instance, to study S2 cross S2, first with kind of the symmetric uh, product symplectic form and then asymmetric product symplectic forms and kind of people built on that. So originally due to Gromov and then McDuff did a ton of work on it and then various people in her wake. Uh, I can give you, there's quite, there's like a sizable list of references. There's maybe 15-ish, 15, 20 papers that have stuff on this, but there's also a very bounded collection of manifolds and it, it feels like, you know, we've got as much mileage as we can out of those kind of ideas and uh, we need ex something extra to go beyond that. Yeah, uh -huh. okay, okay, that, okay, I understand. So, yes, so if I have two, you know, two J-holomorphic curves in dimension greater than four, the expected intersection is always zero. And that is where, that is where you get blocked. So it's a pretty fundamental instruction. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, another, one more? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Here? We know everything about the mirror. <coughs> and we use everything about the mirror. Here? The kernel where? Here? Yeah. Well, no, we don't. So this, this goes back to what I said earlier, whereby this is now a six-fold. If you do the calculation, you know, two equations, but you start in something five dimension, complex five-dimensional. And for we don't know compactly supported symplectomorphisms of R6, you know, the Darbu R6. Um, so for all we know, there could be tons of kernel or there could be nothing. Um, it's small enough that you don't have the exotic reparameterizations of Dimitri Grudel's Elenevins. Okay. 